there's no need to get tense. Relax with Flux Condenser. Subscribe, baby, subscribe. In the following sections, we'll learn about vacuum tube circuits that carry dangerous voltage. Safety first. Don't attempt this work unless you're aware of the dangers and fully understand the precautions necessary to stay safe. I'll tell you about some of these precautions, but by no means all. Undertaking anything you see in this series is at your own risk. The first precaution is simple. If your antique radio hasn't been checked by someone who knows what they're doing, don't plug it in. In fact, you may want to cut the power cord off completely. In many cases, it's become so frayed that plugging it in would cause a spark or fire. It's not just decayed wiring that makes these radios dangerous. Many, made in the 50s and 60s, use something called a selenium rectifier. Seleniums can catch fire and emit toxic smoke. Don't operate a radio with a selenium rectifier. Have it replaced with a modern equivalent. All American 5 radios have what's called a hot chassis. This one's lovely, but touch it the wrong way and you're in for a shock. In an upcoming video, we'll rewire our radio to fix the hot chassis. Sometimes it's necessary to attach probes and test gear to a powered radio Again, only do so if you understand the hazards and how to use your equipment safely. When working on a powered radio, an isolation transformer should be used to isolate it from your home's electrical system. This can help prevent a dangerous shock to you or your test equipment. One with adjustable voltage is preferable as it allows the radio to be powered up slowly while monitoring it for trouble. I also use a current limiter I made this one and it simply consists of a power cord, bulb, power outlet, and switch. The current limiter plugs into the isolation transformer and the radio plugs into the current limiter. If there's a short circuit, the bulb offers protection as excess current will be absorbed in the filament. The bulb also serves as a warning. If it glows brightly, a short is likely and the radio must be turned off quickly before harm is done. If it glows dimly, it's probably fine to proceed. As you'll learn, capacitors in radios hold a charge even when unpowered. It's important to use a discharger to drain them before working on a radio. When using your hands around high voltage, use just one at a time. If both hands get shocked, current will pass through your heart, which can alter or stop its beat. You probably know that electronic parts, even ones that are 80 years old, are joined using solder. Solder is melted with a soldering iron, the tip of which gets very hot. Care needs to be taken to not burn your hands or something else. Always return the iron to its stand after use. Many have no qualms about breathing fumes from melted solder, but they should. The smoke contains toxins, so soldering should be done in a well-ventilated area, and a mask should be worn. If soldering repairs are going to be done frequently, I recommend a fume extractor, which vacuums and filters away the fumes. Lead-free solder is safer for the environment. Some complain that it doesn't melt as well as lead-full, but I say just turn up the heat on your iron and get over it. Good quality, lead-free solder works well, and there's no excuse not to use it for general electronic repair. On the next video, we'll prepare our chassis for the electronics restoration. To stay updated, please subscribe and click the bell. See you soon.